Common Core State Standard Support Video. This is grade six. The math standard is 6RP.2. This standard reads, understand the concept of a unit rate A over B associated with the ratio A to B with B not equal to zero and use rate language in the context of a racial relationship. A unit rate involves a ratio where the denominator is one. Now the foundation for a unit rate is that a numerical comparison of one is the easiest comparison that there is to make. If you went to a hamburger place, the posted prices wouldn't have something like $11.25 for three deluxe burgers. Instead, it would read deluxe burger, $3.75, with the understanding that it's $3.75 for one deluxe burger. The problem is that the idea of comparing to one is lost in most contexts because of how the ratio is expressed. We typically say $20 an hour or $4 a gallon rather than $20 for every one hour or $4 for one gallon. Students probably have a lot more experience with unit rate than we give them credit for because of how unit rates are expressed verbally and in writing. If A over B is a unit rate, then if you stop and think about it, it makes sense then that the B has to be a one. So any task to find a unit rate can be set up as a proportion with the known rate on one side and the unknown unit rate on the other. So for example, let's say we know some ratio C over D. And we want to know what the unit rate is, so then we would set it up. Again, it needs to be over 1. So this is what we're looking for. We're looking for the A. Let's take a unit rate context. Let's say a farmer used 340 pounds of seed to plant 40 acres. And let's say in the future he wants to plant that same crop again, but he's not going to plant 40 acres the next time. So he wants to know how much seed, you know, how many pounds does he use in one acre. So the setup here would be that we will want to know how many pounds of seed there be for one acre. So in this context, it was 340 pounds that he used for 40 acres. Now it's just a matter of doing the computation, and we end up with the solution that we would use 8.5 pounds of seed for every one acre. So now the next time that the farmer is going to plant this crop, he knows that a nice easy ratio, that it's a unit rate of eight and a half pounds of seed for every one acre that he wants to plant. In this context, we have two different uh, cans of some type of item, and we want to figure out which is a better deal. Uh, this is a situation when a unit cost would be advantageous because that enables you to compare apples to apples. It's hard to tell here just by looking if brand W at 12 ounces for 84 cents would be a better deal than 20 ounces for $1.90. So again, let's figure out what the unit rate is for each of the two different brands. Okay, in this case, you always want to have your students write out what it is that they're comparing to what. In this case, we want a unit rate of cost for every ounce. So again, that's the first thing, that is the important thing to set up right off the bat. For the first situation, brand W, we have a total cost of 84 cents in that scenario for 12 ounces. If we do the computation, crunch the numbers, and so forth, we get that this simplifies to a unit rate of 7 cents per ounce. Then in the case of brand Z, again, we want to figure out the cost for every one ounce. 
In this case, the cost is $1.90 for 20 ounces. If we take $1.90 divided by 20 ounces, we will get nine and a half ounces, I mean, sorry, nine and a half cents per ounce. So now we can make a valid comparison that brand W is the better deal because that one is seven cents an ounce and brand Z is nine and a half cents an ounce. There's a lot of other contexts where a unit rate would be most advantageous. Again, in most situations, it would be a context where you want to be able to make a side-by-side -side comparison and the unit rate enables you to do that.